channel. As you can see, we're at West Tech Performance. I've got a five liter modified 302 and we always test them at, whoa, wide open throttle. The question is, how much do they make it just hard throttle? Let's find out. So let's start off by taking a look at the power output run on our modified 302. This was a blueprint engine, or I, rather I take that back, a Marshall engine, just a rebuilt kind of stock rebuild, stock uh, late model hydraulic roller block. It had a cast crank, you know, cast pistons, <laughs> cast rods. Basically, this is a rebuilder special. We did put a set of blueprint aluminum heads on it. This For this test, it had an E303 Ford Racing camshaft in it. It also had long tube headers. We ran it with a Bezier electric water pump and a Holly HP. We had good size injectors on it. We also had it top with a uh, GT40 intake manifold, the tubular um, upper intake manifold, and a 65 millimeter throttle body. And we obviously optimized the air fuel and time. It was run on 91 octane. And run in this manner, allowing the throttle body to run at wide open throttle. We were producing 368 horsepower and 382, yeah, 382 foot pounds of torque. So it did, it did well. Um, and here's what happened when we went to part throttle. So what I did was rather than trying to keep the throttle consistent at some predetermined TPS number, what I did is just put a we, uh, I built a throttle stop for it and we measured the swing of the throttle opening and I put it as close as I could to 50% throttle. So 50% throttle would be something that we would use the normal, a normal person would be using a lot out on the street. So this kind of simulates you just, you know, kind of rolling hard into the throttle, let's say, and, and taking off and driving around, maybe getting on the freeway, you know, times when you'd be using more than a conservative throttle angle where you're trying to get good fuel mileage, but not, you know, jumping on it, going to wide open throttle. If it's an automatic, you know, maybe initiating a kick down in the trans or something like that. So this is, um, this is fairly good information. It also helps tell us what would happen if there is a restriction in the inlet system, either an air intake or a different size throttle body. It gives us a fairly good indication of what happens when we restrict the inlet. So we'll, let's take a look at that. Here's what happened when we ran our 65 millimeter throttle body at 50% throttle opening. So this is our part throttle and we can see it did fairly well down low. In fact, um, at our at our uh, starting point of 2600 RPM, we saw a difference of 156 horsepower versus 160.8. So, you know, four, just four or five horsepower down there, not very much. So not a, not a big difference between full throttle and wide open throttle. And we'll see that in the vacuum and the KPA readings, when it, what, what we're gonna cover next. And, and the same thing with torque, we're just not seeing really very too much of a difference. But as we go up in engine speed, where the airflow demand gets greater and greater, our 50% throttle angle becomes more and more restrictive. So we see a bigger and bigger uh, change in power. And we see the peak power at 50% throttle, Me measured 344 horsepower, still not too bad, still making decent power even at part throttle, and peak torque checked in at 366.7 foot-pounds of torque. Lucky for us, in this combination, our peak torque occurred fairly low in the RPM range before the airflow demand is, is really great, so the, they were fairly comparable even at 50% throttle. So if you're driving around in your truck and, or, or your car, whatever it is, and you've got a fuel-injected motor, and this, and this this um, carries over not just to Fords, but LSs and big blocks and big block Fords and Dodges and everything else. So if you're looking at a change in throttle angle of your throttle body equipped vehicle, this is the kind of thing that you could, could expect. Um, and and like I said, this also carries over to if we if we have and we'll see from the KPA readings and the vacuum readings that actually our throttle body even at wide open throttle body was too small for this combination. We actually had vacuum present. Um, but if you have a throttle body that is too small for your combination, you'll see that in a vacuum read. If you take a vacuum reading in the manifold 
um, after the throttle body, you'll see that there is definitely a restriction there. Or if you take a reading between the throttle body and any other thing that you suspect as a restriction, anything in the inlet system, a mass air meter, if you have that, some sort of cold air induction system, whatever you have, if you take a reading there and you see vacuum and you see a sizable amount of vacuum present, that tells you that that thing is a restriction. In our case, Having it half throttle was a restriction. Actually having it full throttle, our 65 millimeter throttle body and the inlet this, in this case on the GT40 intake manifold, the tube part of it is also restrictive on this combination. So let's check out our KPA and vacuum readings to get a better idea of what's going on when we go from full throttle to just half throttle. Now that we've taken a look at the change in power associated with having the throttle at full throttle or part throttle and predictably so, we saw a change in power. So, and the thing that's interesting, and this will correlate that, is that we saw a change in power, and the change in power increased with engine speed as airflow demand increases, so that there was less airflow demand down low, so the partially open throttle body was not nearly as much of a restriction, but as the airflow demand increased, we saw a bigger difference in power at the top of the rev range where more and more airflow is needed. And like I said, this is something that we always see when we have a change in throttle body size, for instance. Oftentimes, we'll see very little power down low and then more and more power as we go up as, as engine speed and airflow demand does increase. So I'll show you what happened when we were data logging the vacuum that's present in the system in the intake manifold. So run at full throttle with our GT40 intake manifold and our 65 millimeter throttle body. What happened was we started off at, uh, you know, just right around a, a tenth of an inch of mercury, let's say, and uh, which is right near, basically, it's it, that's full throttle and it's <laughs> basically a very, 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 very little restriction, very, very little vacuum. And what happened is the vacuum increased because the airflow demand is going up even at full throttle because what's happening is on this GT40 intake, and we know this to be true because we've tried other intake manifolds on this. I have a video up where we changed over to a dual plane carbureted intake manifold and we saw a pretty sizable increase in power. So the 65 millimeter throttle body and the inlet going into the intake manifold itself where we're measuring vacuum in the common plenum the the induction system on going into that manhole is actually fairly restrictive and we see that here because our uh, our vacuum increased from a tenth basically of an inch all the way at 6000 rpm increased to 1.1 inches now that's not still a ton but it in, it did increase um you know we see that consistently increase as we went up at engine speed and if we compare this to what happened when we ran this thing with the throttle at 50% open, here is our part throttle number, and that is the bottom one. And you can see there was a lot more vacuum present, and this is something that we, <laughs> we expected. There was a lot more vacuum present at part throttle. In fact, there was more vacuum present at part throttle even at our load in point of 2600 RPM. We saw uh, five tenths of an inch, so half an inch of vacuum, even at down at 2600 RPM with uh, the throttle opened at half throttle, and that increased all the way down to 2.3 inches of vacuum. In fact, it got as low as 2.4 inches of vacuum at 5400 RPM, 54 and 5500 RPM, and then changed a little bit as we started making, as the motor started making less power um, as we carried out from 5500 to 6000 RPM. So as we can see here, because we had the throttle at half throttle, we increased the vacuum, which lowered the power output produced by our combination. Let's get to our conclusion. I almost forgot. <laughs> Before we get to our conclusion, I wanted to uh, correlate this with the airflow readings or the vacuum readings so that we were getting on because we were running this with the Holly HP management system. So we had we had a map sensor and run with full throttle. We started off according to the Holly at 96 kPa registered on the on the uh, ECU, and it dropped down to 94 kPa. 
when we were running this thing at 50% throttle, the, the run started out at 94 kPa and dropped all the way down to 89 kPa. Again, it's just correlating this dyno data reading, basically, that we data log with that from the Holly, and they're both showing that more and more vacuum is present as we go up in engine speed. Now we can get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running our 65 millimeter throttle body on our modified 302 fuel injected motor, both at 100% or wide open throttle and 50% throttle? Well, we learned four things. I'm going to go over each one of them. First of all, the risk of sounding like Captain Obvious, we made more power at wide open throttle than we did at part throttle. But the second part of that, and this is very important, is the math. We didn't change the power output by 50% going to 50% throttle. In fact, we only lost 24 horsepower going to 50% throttle. That's a change of 6.5%. That means at 50% throttle angle, we had 93.5% of the available power of our motor. That's doing pretty good. And we did even better on torque. If you look at the peak torque output, it only dropped by 3.9% or 15 foot-pounds. That means we have 96.1% of the available torque even at 50% throttle. So this tells us that, hey, if we look at inlet restrictions, we need to look really closely because there's not huge power gains. But if you look at vacuum readings and you take vacuum readings as we discussed between things that you're trying to test and you do see vacuum there, chances are you're going to see some power gains like we did. You could measure it in front or back of the throttle body and air inlet systems, mass air meters in the manifold itself. All of that stuff works even under the carburetor. So the final thing is, and I get this kind of comment all the time, yeah, I was running down the road and I was at like 75% throttle. I was going 150 miles an hour, man. That thing would go 200. It doesn't actually work that way. So when somebody says that to you, yeah, I was only at 75% throttle, you can tell them you had 99% of the available power, even though you're only at 75% throttle, because according to Richard, that's how math works. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.